Hello. Welcome on back to my channel. Today is an exciting day because I've partnered with Sephora to present you all with this tutorial. So a huge thank you to Sephora for sponsoring this video and for supplying me with all the goodies that I'll be using today. For today's look, I created a really sultry and effortless look that I hope you guys will like. So if you wanna learn how I created this look right here, then keep on watching. So to begin, I'm using the Luminous Dewy Skin Mist from Tatcha to prep the skin. Our model today, Judah, already has gorgeous skin, so I'm not going to end up going in with a whole lot of foundation for her after this. Therefore, I'm keeping the skin prep pretty light, which is why this thin veil of hydration is really perfect. After I mist it onto the face, I just work it into the skin with my Beauty Blender. For foundation, I'm using the Luminous Foundation from Anastasia Beverly Hills, and I'm also applying this with my Beauty Blender. As I said, I'm not using a lot of foundation today. I want our model skin to really shine through the products, and I want to keep the skin breathable and fresh. More than anything, I'm using the foundation to even out her skin tone, along with give her a slight tan as her face is a tad lighter than her body, so uh, we're just making everything a little more cohesive. You know what I'm saying? Today's application is a little more practical for an everyday look. You can notice that we can still see Judah's natural texture and shine and freckles peek through the foundation, which is the goal here. Once I've applied a sheer layer of foundation, I'm going to move on to concealing. To do so, I'm using the Overachiever Concealer from Huda Beauty in the shade Toasted Almond, and I'm applying this to the under eye area before blending it out. I'm not going too crazy with this either. Sometimes less is more, and if I need to add a tad bit more product, you'll see me do so. I've used this concealer a few times now on my channel, and I do enjoy using it because it's full coverage, so a little goes a long way. I, I mean, many other products I'm using today you've seen me use before probably. Honestly, that's why this partnership with Sephora kind of worked out perfectly. I get 99% of my makeup from Sephora anyways. <laughs> I've been a Rouge member for, I don't even know how long now it's been, but it's been forever. I rack up my points because I'm definitely, definitely <laughs> that guy every time checking out and using my points to to get all the, um, uh, the rewards, the sample size products at the front. <laughs> I don't know what it is with me. If you don't know what I'm talking about and if you sign up for the Sephora Beauty Insiders program and start racking up your points, yeah, you'll thank me later. But as for this concealer, I'm just gonna bring up a tad bit onto the lids and this will act as our primer before we later apply the eyeshadows. Now that the brightening concealer is applied, I'm using another shade of the Huda Beauty Overachiever Concealer to bring in the contours of the face and to warm it up. This is in the shade Hazelnut, and I'm beginning this placement with the hollows of the cheeks before moving on to the rest of the face, including the forehead and nose. Okay, the contour is applied. It's really soft and diffused. Our model doesn't look like a whole new person. She still looks like her same beautiful self. We just enhanced her complexion by warming it up with that deeper toned concealer. Now for one of my most favorite parts, we're using the Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Liquid Blush in the shade Happy. And as you see here, I'm placing this onto the back of my hand before pressing my Beauty Blender into it and then onto the face. This is my first time using this blush and from what I've heard, these blushes are extremely pigmented. So I'm easing on into this, but I will say I now understand what all the hype is about. The blush looks so beautiful on our model's skin and I barely used a drop of this and it was still more than enough to bring back some color to the cheeks. <laughs> so, so beautiful. Thank you. 
I love bringing blush onto the brow bone and nose, so that's what I'm doing. In my opinion, it's really flattering and it ties in the whole makeup look. Once I have that blush blended in, I'm going in with my Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder to set everything into place. Most of this product is going underneath the eyes, only because that's usually where most of the creasing occurs. But besides that area, I'm being really soft with the amount of powder I'm applying. We don't have a lot of foundation and concealers on the skin, so there's really no need to go too heavy with the powder, unless you wanted a really matte look or you needed your makeup to last throughout the day without touch-ups, but like I said earlier, I want to see Judah's natural texture and shine peek through. To reinforce the contour, I'm using the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin Powder Foundation and running this along the areas I earlier applied the contour. This powder is in the shade R530, I believe. I'll link it down below in the description box, along with everything else, but I love the Matte Velvet Skin Powders from Makeup Forever. I usually use them to brighten the under eye area or even to set the face alongside a translucent powder. But in this case, this was the perfect shade to bronze up the skin. To start the brows, I'm using the Master Matte's eyeshadow palette from Makeup by Mario to fill in the sparse areas. I'm using Matte 11 from his palette. I, I've been using this palette off and on since its release. It's just one of those eyeshadow palettes that are super versatile and just convenient to have, you know what I mean? I can use it on the eyes, I can use it to contour the nose, or in this case, to fill in the brows. Our model has full brows as is, but I just wanna fill them in a tad bit and elongate them. Next up, I'm using the Detailing Brow Pen by Anastasia Beverly Hills in the shade Dark Brown to draw on some brow hairs. Is it 100% necessary? <laughs> Probably not, but I love, love, love this brow pen. I personally use this in the shade Ebony on myself. I prefer the look of a natural fluffy brow and this pen definitely helps. All right, once I've drawn in some hairs, I'm completing the other eyebrow off camera and following up with the very last brow product we'll be using today, which is the 24 hour brow setter gel by Benefit. And I'm running this through the brow hairs, starting with running it against the brow hair and then brushing them back into the position I want them to dry down in. And by running the gel against the brow hairs first, it just allows the hairs to become fully saturated with the gel before they set. I'm heading back to the blush we used earlier from Rare Beauty and I'm applying a bit more to the apples of the cheeks using a blush brush. I loved the blush so much that I just wanted more <laughs> and more <laughs> and more. I love baby pink blushes. I think they look so flattering on every skin tone. With the brown gel eyeliner pencil from One Size Beauty, I'm running this along the lash line. And because I'm going to end up smoking this out, I'm not being too precise with the placement of this. And here we go with blending it out. I love a smudgy liner moment. It's so easy, it's effortless looking, and it's appropriate for either a daytime look or a nighttime look. If I wanted to make this a little more dramatic for the evening, I would probably use black eyeliner rather than brown. But in this case, we're sticking with browns, which is why I dipped into the warm brown shade called Matte 8 from the same Mario palette to buff everything out. And with the Honey Naked palette from Urban Decay, I'm dipping into the shade Queen and slowly building this up. This shade is a cool toned brown shimmer, so the little amount of reflect on the eye will glam it up a bit without it being too much. In fact, I'm applying so little of this eyeshadow that there's not even fallout. I mean, 
real talk, there should never be that much fallout anyways when you use eyeshadows, regardless of the brand or the formula. I think we're just so used to seeing over the years on Instagram and stuff, people heavily dipping into the eyeshadow pans and directly applying it to the lid. <laughs> and trust me, I was that person too. I've been there and done that, but I've learned that I don't have to be so heavy handed with shadows to get a beautiful result. Little by little, build up the pigment, be patient with it, and your under eyes will thank you because they won't be collecting all of that fallout. That's why I always start with the face and then do the eyes afterwards. I know my approach to how slowly I build up the eyeshadows really pays off. Once I've built up the shadows to my liking, I'm using the Lash Brag Mascara from Anastasia Beverly Hills to coat the lashes. And I'm really working this into the lashes because I personally love the look of a chunky lash. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. I, I just love a thick mascara application. And honestly, I love this eye look without false lashes, but I know there are some of you who wouldn't dare leave the house without lashes, so I'll meet you somewhere in between and I'll throw on a very, very natural synthetic wispy lash. Next, with the Illuminator Liquid Highlighter from Iconic London, I'm first placing this onto the back of my hand, buffering it out evenly with the Beauty Blender, and then lightly pressing this onto the skin. Very much so the same way we applied the blush earlier. And while there's no right or wrong way with makeup, this has been the best technique for me to apply liquid highlighters onto the face without disrupting the products that are already on the face. Also, it just allows for an even application and prevents the liquid highlighter lighter from going on patchy. So I've dabbed this product onto the high points of the cheekbones, the forehead, down the center of the nose, the cupid's bow, and chin. For the lips, I'm starting with this liquid lipstick from Anastasia Beverly Hills in the shade Malt, which is this moody nude shade that's perfect for our model skin tone. And I'm using this to line the lips, keeping this product on the borders and away from the center. Because I want this nude lip to look kind of worn in, I'm actually not going to use a lipstick for the center of the lips today because I think Judah's natural lip color is really beautiful as is. So I'm just taking a clean eyeshadow blending brush to diffuse the edges of the liquid lipstick we use, thus giving us a natural ombre look. And for gloss, I'm using the Fenty Beauty Gloss Balm in the shade Cake Shake, and I'm applying this all over the lip. You all already know how much I love a good gloss, which makes it all that much more crazy <laughs> that I'm just now hopping on this Fenty Gloss bandwagon. This gloss is so good, and it's the mini version that came in the holiday set. So it's a, it's a set of four different gloss shades, all in the mini travel size, which is perfect for me because I prefer travel size glosses or lipsticks because I always lose them or they end up in the washer machine or I give them to a client or whatever it may be. And lastly, I'm heading back to the Tatcha Dewy Skin Mist to bring back some luminosity to the skin, which is officially the very last step in creating this effortless, sultry makeup look. There we have it kids i hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you did be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel you can also check out more of my work on my instagram at painted by spencer and until next time i'll see you soon